What do you need help? Hey, well, Mark, fancy meeting you here. How about that then, yeah. It's Ooh. one of them very rare things at the moment, Mark, a British heat wave. <laughs> I am naked. No, I'm not. No. Right, um, we, I glued up Friday. Late Friday, I finished at five o'clock. I had done this fillet of the inside here, which is uh, a mixture of sawdust and, and, and the uh, colloidal silica. Uh, and it was all taped up to protect it. So I've come in Monday morning and cleaned the tape off and I'm just sanding this sanding this a little bit because I am going to glass fibre tape over the top of this here. But very pleased with it so far, Mark. It's, it's gone well, hasn't the it? The strength is phenomenal. Yeah, I, I've only had one problem, uh, which is the, the little scarf joint, which I'll walk around to show you. Well, have a look at this. I've been uh, sticking a split. It splits open. As you can see as I open the clamp there, that split at that point there. Now, what I'll do is I'll... When this, is, this has to come back off, it's not permanently on yet, Mark. I will take it off, open it up, give it a good sanding back, and use some Araldite on that one there, which is still an epoxy, but I, I, I'll get a really good quality Araldite, and I'm probably more, more guaranteed that it'll work there, because it's yeah. probably a mistake I made with fillers and so on. But there's so much of it in the rest of it here, Mark. You can see all this, this joint here, and there'll be glass fibre tape inside and out. And I'm popping down to Shrewsbury Marine today to buy some faster cure and epoxy. Nothing wrong with the epoxy I had, but it's a 12 hour cure period. That's a long time. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go for one that's got a much quicker curing period, so I can make, make a few steps a little bit quicker, because I want it for two solid days now, Mark, so that's the plan anyway. Yeah. So for today, Mark, what I need to do is get this cleaned up, get the outside cleaned up, glass fibre take the inside and the out, glue this out wall on, and hopefully the little block spaces, which I'll talk about in, in a future clip, that um, are going to leave me little gaps between the in wall and the out wall that enable me to strap things and fix them into the canoe. So if I get that far by the end of the day, Mark, tomorrow another big push doing the inside and the seats and so on, and, and we're nearly at the point where it'll be sanding and tidying up. I have got, I'm still undecided about whether I make some air pockets, some permanent air pockets in the end, flotation pockets here. I think I probably will do that, so that'll be a job for tomorrow, Mark. Brilliant. But it's, it's gone really well, Mark, it's really solid. It's light as well, isn't it? Really pleased with it. Made There's it. a lot more stuff to glue on and get going and make it safer. Of course, these spaces go, Mark. They will they will be gone eventually, but uh, yeah, it's, it's really getting close now, Mark. Good. Yeah. Right, we'll catch you in the next saga in the library either later on today or tomorrow. A bit later on this morning, Mark. I've been to the marina and got the rest of the stuff. Brilliant. All right, Neil. See you. You look like Donald Duck. Sound like him. <laughs> All right, Mark. That's good, isn't it? Been busy. I've uh, got a bit of simple minds on. Put it to the stop. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold that. I'll pull. Hey, look at that. Yeah, there we are, Mark. So rounded off. There's a tiny step in that to sand back. That was deliberate there. Uh, only a tiny step. So I'll sand that back so it's got the nice flowing curve there. And that'll get glass taped. The end needs sanding, but I'll wait until that out wall is off and I'll tidy all that end up and then it's going to get glass fibre tape. So we're not far off the next bit of uh, mixing up some epoxy mark. Brilliant. You're going to go and fetch it now, are you, in a bit? I will, yeah, I'll just get this finished sanded, tidy up, and so then what, I'll uh, pop out and go and get it. What will, do, what will you do on this then, just paint? Well, I feel, I don't know, yeah, I, um, I've got enough epoxy left now if I buy this new stuff to give it at least one, possibly two coats of epoxy on the outside first. But no fiberglass, just epoxy. Well, no, no, I won't fiberglass the whole thing. I'll just put an epoxy coat on for waterproofing and toughness. Yeah. So that'll soak right into the wood, and then I'll just use an ordinary paint on top of that. Fantastic. That's the plan. But I think, I think what I'm going to do, which is a deviation from the plans, is that there is glass fiber tape along the outside edge here. I think I'll put a stripe across this join as well, just for belt and braces while I've got it out, Mark. Why I'm not? going to be filling and sanding it all anyway, so I might as well put some on the gym. Yeah, fine. Just to reinforce it. All right. So, I'll catch, you, catch you when you get back yeah. to that um, epoxy. Cheers. Hello, Mark. Hello, I would wave, but a bit busy. That's this right. is a, you know, I've said before, we're having that rare thing of a, an English heat wave. Yeah. Well, English heat waves and epoxy resin don't go hand in hand, Mark. No, I bet they Especially don't. when you bought the fast cure stuff. So, I'm having to do it in little installments and little stages, and learning a bit as I go because it's all a bit new to me. Well, I seem to have got one side on fine. It's good, it's isn't it? It's taped on there, Mark. Yeah, that, that's 
stippled into the resin. I put a coat underneath, put the tape on, and then uh, just push all the little bits of bubbles out and creases out, and then, uh, and then, and that's about it, really, man. Not an awful lot more to it, really. But um, make sure you've got plenty of the resin on. I'm going to sand it back. It's going to get painted on the outside. I bought the paint today, Mark. Have you? I'm going to have a look at that. What's this called? What do you, what do you call this ribbon? Well, it's, just, it's, a, it's a glass fiber tape. That's it. Um, it's quite I good, isn't it? On YouTube, some people have just got big sheets and cut it out. But what the advantage of this is that it's woven as a strip, yeah. so it doesn't fray at the end. Very useful, and it's quite. You can sort of tug it and pull it a little bit to without get it, pulled, it to yeah, yeah without it coming undone. It, and it, it's because sort of, it's woven the round and round and round. Where did you get of, it from? Uh, online. This, this is made by West System. This one, which is yeah. the sort of industry standard glass fiber people. But I bought a slightly cheaper one, which was in, in fact um, sold initially as exhaust glass fiber tape to wrap your exhaust pipes up. Oh, right. rounds on them. But when I read into the small print, it was just glass fiber. In fact, here it is. Here's a piece of it here, Mark. That, that's the one that's the uh, exhaust wrap tape, and that's the one that's the West System one. So you can see that's a slightly better quality. Yeah, it's better quality. But that would the inside it? with that, and the, the more structural outside's been done with that one there, Mark. All right, okay. So get in there. Right, I have just enough to do the nose on this, which will be perfect for me, because I measured it out thinking if I get half of it done, that'll be brilliant. Oh, I see. You've actually trimmed the nose down. Yeah, well, I've, I've just sanded it, Mark. I've got the belt sander on it and, and did that. So the little bit I got there, I'll wrap down here. I'll stipple it on like that just to get a, a tack going on that bit there. Like that. Get it coated. And I'll wrap that down onto it like that. And then sort of brush it into it. And then. That's what you mean. It holds it together it better. Just, it, it does. It put, you know, it, uh, it seems to do what I want it to. I've, I've not struggled with it, it's done what I wanted, Mark. That was a bonus. A um, little bit short there, I'll cut a little piece off in a second and overlap it. It's, um, yeah, it's quite forgiving, isn't it? It is, actually, yeah. I thought, it, I thought it'd be more difficult than this. The only the only downside, like I said, when we just started this bit of film, was the temperature today, Mark. Yeah. It's warm. I thought about doing this naked, Mark, because uh, I'm that hot, but... Probably, yeah, not, no, probably not appropriate, is it? <laughs> no, but I can understand. I definitely understand. Uh, yeah, oops. I've dropped it already once. It's rough, Mark. I'll, I'll be sanded lots of epoxy off the floor when we get back next to it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to put my scissors, Mark. There we are. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to cut a little strip off the other piece. Finish off the, what I'm now deciding is the stern. The you know what I'm about? All right. And, um, yeah, looking good, isn't it? Yeah. Please with it, Mark. Please with it. There we are. That's gone. Treat. I've got exactly the right amount on this pot. Okay. Brilliant. Right. What's your next step? I see you've drilled the holes in the bottom. These are for your um. Well, there's a little keel bit. Keels. Yeah. That's going to. Uh, that's going to go in those holes there. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just. And you drilled them from the inside yeah, out yeah, because you'd. Yeah. You pre. Point. You, know, you kept that as a reference point. It was so pre-marked, you know, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, Mark. A little bit of this overlapped on there. It all gets sanded to be tidied up anyway. It's just starting to gel now. I might talk about timing it to perfection. I did cool the epoxy down in some in a bucket of water first just to yeah. mix it at a lower temperature in the first place. See if that bought me any extra time. And it has a little bit more actually. Okay. In case anybody's wondering, he's not wearing a skirt, he's wearing a pair of shorts, but it does look a bit weird. <laughs> and that's the the case of the defense. Yeah. So this is the stuff that he's using. I'll bring you back on there. And that's what he's using to actually get yeah, epoxy resin. They come as a, where'd you get them from? A marine center. I got that from a marine supplier. I've got the Shubu uh, Marine Supplier, I think yeah. it's called. Very well. Nice lot. Yeah, they all are. The at London. It's very, very helpful. Yeah, very, very good. good. I'm stuck to the paper. There we go. OK. A little piece of wood does the job as well, doesn't it? Yeah, just need to smooth it down. Come back to my little steering stick. I didn't plan to use it for this, but it's doing it a treat, Mark. Yeah. Not special rollers like Mark's had for this, but I didn't really want to get into that because you've got to get into all the solvent to clean it all afterwards. Yeah. Here we are, Neely. Hello, Mark. Hello, Neil. How are you? Was up yesterday. <laughs> We're now on an amber Met Office warning for heat. And here I am, 
a poxy in a canoe. Look at him, so, um, he's yeah, yeah, again. It's been in the centre now, the keel's been done, Mark. We, we've been sort of cut, carved, shaped, and it now got a bit of adhesive on it. You see, I've put a stripe of the uh, adhesive along here, the epoxy. Yep. Uh, and um, what we're going to do now, Mark, is attempt to actually get this thing glued on. I've saved a little bit on the end, just a little bit in the pot there to just dab on the end. So here we are. I didn't want you to miss out on filming me applying it easy anyway. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, a good job that. <laughs> and you're going to get underneath here and try yeah, and put two I'll screws in. Thing, right? Yeah, I'm going to put a little blob on the end here. I wasn't quite sure if I had enough in the piping bag, and um, and it turns out I, I'm all right actually. Right. So um, measure it exactly. Lock one there. So, so it's been packed on, same procedure as before, the piping bag, yep. straight down the centre there. You so lined up there? I've got the mask and tape here, I've marked the centre here, we've had a little dry one before, didn't we Mark? And I'm yep. now going to run underneath, climb underneath, uh, and put some of these in. But Mark might need to be on the top at this point. Holding it down. To hold it in position. So um, if you stop that skidding left and right Mark, because the pressure's probably going to come at that point there, because we're drilling through there at that okay. point there. I'm going to, um, let me just, let me just pause the camera, yeah. Go. Hello Mark. <laughs> Can you see me? Or are we looking at you yeah. at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we've got the first one in. The, yeah, just yeah. at this point here, we see it squishing out. So we've got a bit of time. We've got about 10 minutes to get the job done right with the glue and the adhesives and the temperature and everything. So I'll put another one in here, one here, one here. That'll be the centre in. I'll then go to the end and then I'll fill the rest in after then because it'll hold itself in place then. So that's what we're working on at the moment, Mark. I'll just film you putting one Yeah, OK, Mark. Yeah, let's get going with that then. Right, I'm holding it. Yep. yep, got it down. There we go. So Neil's going to pop underneath. I can't film it because I've got to push down on the skeg. So he's going. I'm going to go underneath. There's a hole here. The front underneath there. there. Uh, I'll screw that in. That'll pull that down then. And we know that then, looking down the thing, that it's straight then. You see, we'll go under the other end. Okay. And then I'll have time on my side to, to get the rest done carefully. Mark. Good hands free. Both in the same shot. <laughs> right, so we're going to push down on this. Yes. I'll get on this. Dead centre. Hold on. Oh, it's squeaky that one. Right, I think I'm pretty well. Yeah. You see it squeezing out then. Beautiful. That's what we want, Mark. Squishing out. Squish that along the majority of the length will be perfect, that will. So, what I'll do now is I'll. There's about four more each side, but at least I know it's straight now and it's held in and it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. I cast my eye down it, Mark, that's beautiful. 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 Yeah, it's good, isn't it? That'll do it. That's the trickiest job. That's one of the two jobs, one of the few jobs you just can't do yourself. That's yeah. in the canoe over, but uh, yeah, thanks, Mark. Pleasure, mate. Morning, Mark. It's yeah. been a hot couple of days in the workshop, yes. so we got in early. We're going to finish at 10 o'clock today. We had some other workmen in the workshop yesterday, so it got in the way a bit, and I've got myself an hour or so behind. So um, I've just got a couple of bits of jobs to do to get finished off today, Mark. Oh, by the way, have I told you why I wear this, Mark? This holds brass. I think... I think... Um, I, I haven't told the world, though, have I, Mark? Tell the world. Well, in the medieval times, they believed that shiny metal would ward off the evil eye. And I've had this since the start of COVID, and I haven't had COVID yet, so it must work, Mark. There you go. It, proof it works. <laughs> so that everybody should be issued with a horse brass and wear it. Does that work, don't you think? Anyway. Um, yeah, so what I did was I'm sorting of these bits of uh, timber onto here, the in, in walls and out walls here, and I've got these little blocks in here. So you can see on this side how I'll be able to strap and tie things in. That's basically what these little slots are for. Um, so I nailed, pinned blocks, glued each block, and there's a big character mark, 60 blocks on the whole thing, bit of glue, pinned it in there. You can see this expanding uh, glue here, it's very, very good stuff, very strong. It's certainly easier than using epoxy. And then I'll, I will cut and fit the other inner part here, which is what I fitted yesterday, just there. Looks good, doesn't it? It's, it's very tidy, isn't it? Yeah, it it is I left strong. it a little bit proud, so I can plane back into the thing. Uh, and there's a bit of finishing at the end there, which will explain it in a few, in a clip or two. You time. know, when you did your feathering down here. Yeah. Are you doing anything else with that, or you leave? I don't that? know, Mark. I don't know. I might just sand it back a little more and just varnish over it because it has actually come out a little bit neater than I hoped. 
Um, it's, it's come off better than I thought because I've seen it one or two people's uh, canoe jobs and it's a bit bit messy. But I think it's worth sanding it a bit more so and just painting over it. I was going to glass fiber over the top of the thing, and I still might do that. That could come as one of the final things. But at the moment, it all seems like it's strong enough, Mark Rain. Looking. I don't good. want to mess with it, you know, because yeah. it, it might it might not look so nice when I varnish the inside. Because intention is still to finish all this beautiful wood with the varnish. So. Fitting this like you've done now, yeah. you've got the other side to yeah. fit, and virtually, apart from... Uh, well, there's only a few, that you are right, there's fitting of seats, there's the, I'll go to the part that's uh, being made there, Mark, I, I made this yesterday, this is the uh, little uh, thwart that fits in the centre there, I think I showed you in an earlier clip, I've got a strengthening piece on the back of it there, yeah. so that will fit in the inside of there, across there, there's a bracing piece. I'm going to use another piece of beach like that to make a handle that you grab either end to carry it with. They've yeah. got the same piece of beech wood. There'll be a little knee piece, I think it might be called, not nautical, um, which will be an infill piece of mahogany, a little triangle that'll sit in the end of there. And then I might well make a bulkhead part with a, an air pocket, an airtight pocket as a flotation thing. But those are all sort of finishing things. Effectively, Mark, in an hour or two, this will be a what canoe. You, what are you going to do at the end here? Well, you said you were going to bore people. Oh, that's right, yeah. Well, what I'm going to do is this epoxy puddle here, which is brown, is beautifully triangular shaped. So what I'm going to do is make a bit of a feature of some of this here. So I'll make a mahogany infill piece. You'll see that later on. I'll cut a slot in here, fill that with a brown adhesive again. So we'll see triangle, thin line, triangle, and another bit there. So I'll make a feature out of... Out of what was well, going to do this? Is it just a personal? No, touch? it's just a personal touch, and it's only come about because this this void here. I thought, what am I going to fill that with? I thought, well, if I fill it with the epoxy and polish it, it'll look like a little brown triangle. What are you going to do with this at the end? Oh, well, that'll get filled in again. I'll show you that later on. Uh, I'll, put, I'll fill through the epoxy into that little gap there, and then that'll just be tied it up and rounded on the end there. Nice. And some people have cut it flush and rounded it, but as it sit, sits there, I can backfill all that void there with epoxy and then tidy it up like that. And this is your. Your yeah, it went on beautifully, Mark. Yeah, rock solid. You can see I filled this in here with the sand, uh, with the wood dust and epoxy there. That will all get tidied up and finished off. So mm -hmm. I've gone from cutting bits of wood out to sticking bits of wood together, back Two. to cutting bits of wood away again. And then so lots of finishing on this now. When, when these last few bits get glued on, it's all then back to routing and planing and tidying and making it look a bit Beautiful. slicker, I suppose. Well, I'll come back later on. Yeah, I mean, oh. an hour or two, these will be out, the other part will be in here, the port will be in, um, and then I'll have to go and lie in the garden this afternoon, Mark. Fine. Good idea, didn't Yeah, you? good idea. Not be. again. Another <laughs> animal warning day for heat. Is it? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll catch you in a bit then. Cheers, mate. Okie dokie, that really concludes it. Neil's gone now. He finished off with these two, I don't know what he pulled, called them now. It's like a displacement plate, plate which connects to the keel underneath. He's going to sand all this down to make it look all nice. He'd be a perfectionist, like I said. But, yeah, what a job. Look at this. Three-day canoe, virtually. He's put a piece of oak to make it look like an arrow, and he's, this will all be sanded flat and plain. It'll look really nice, like an arrowhead. That's it. If you like the video, I think, well, this is, does conclude, I think, there's only the, well, he calls it a, I don't know what I call it, a yoke, piece of the yoke is whatever what you put over your neck and this is something else, a year, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, that's it. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. It helps him as well. Thumbs up and uh, share. That would be fantastic. Take care and we will see you in the next one. The next one will be coming, will be in a about a week's time because he's gonna he's off now uh, he's gonna paint it and prep it and i'll show you him doing that and that'll be the end of the uh, building of the, the canoe okay take care bye